Hello tribe, it is your mom of three in NYC and I am back with another video. I am on my way to my manicure appointment. I'm not even going to show you my nails, they're a hot mess. And sorry for the construction noise in the background, but I, I go to a new nail salon which I'm obsessed with and it's just the, the best vibe ever. We are actually on the lower east side. I believe I'm gonna stick around for lunch here as well. But just like the cutest, it's giving me very Sex in the City vibes. Samantha, not Carrie, Carrie's Upper West Side. <laughs> Anywho, just wanted to give you guys a feel how adorable, adorable this area is. I will check back in. If this happens to be your very first time on my channel, hello and welcome. Good to have you. My name is Teneza. I'm the mother of three smart, smart kids living in the heart of New York City. I want to invite you. I want to adopt you. That's what it is. I want to adopt you into my YouTube family, my tribe. All you have to do is smash that button, S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-E, S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-E, -S -E. subscribe down below. If you are already part of my fam, my YouTube fam, thank you for the support. Please make sure that your notifications are on so that every video I get, you get a notification. Hashtag multitasking mom edition. This video, my friends, is a chit chat, NYC Eats, Eat With Me, and movie review all in one, all in one. I got a manicure today, and I usually do a pop of color, whether it's red or orange or pink. Today I went for like a nude. It's funny actually, we dropped BB2 off my three-year-old in his Sunday school on Sunday and the administrator had this nude on and I said that's beautiful I complimented her and everything and I said today when I went to get my manicure that's exactly the color that I got I kind of love it two-hour manicure when I tell you my new nail lady her name is Janet she took her time my nails just feel better like literally my nails feel better I'm on this soup kick though. I had this Mexican corn chowder for lunch yesterday. I was in the mood for soup and I was like, egg drop soup is what I want. I will insert some footage here of this Chinese restaurant here in the East Village. Yes, East Village. All right, tribe, I'm in the East Village getting lunch from Fei Ma, my very first time here. It is a Chinese restaurant where I ordered pickup. I ordered egg drop soup and a shrimp roll. Let's see what let's see what it's hitting for. So I ordered a large egg drop soup and a shrimp roll. Oh, this is huge. Golly! Old school crispy noodles. Here to get a manicure wanted to get lunch and i like to get lunch in the neighborhood where i am i feel like exploring sometimes sometimes you want to stick with your tried and true because you know what to expect and you know what you're getting but then sometimes like today i said let's be a little bit adventurous and so look how big that egg drop soup is this shrimp roll i'll include footage right here of the actual it's not really a restaurant i'm glad i didn't expect to sit down somewhere it's more of what I see uptown usually, Chinese restaurants, or in Brooklyn actually, where they're just, it's a huge kitchen that's open, and then there's a register where you get your food. And that's what this one was. I am not mad at it at all. I watched this documentary that I wanna recommend for everyone to watch all up in the biz it is a documentary on showtime of biz marquee you know i love a documentary and i love to learn i learned so much he actually dj'd a party that i went to i was visiting colleges my junior year high school and i went to uva for their black 
BSA weekend, Black Student Association weekend. And he was DJing the party. Biz Marquis was. He did a phenomenal job. I mean, just mixing the songs, his song choice was unbelievable. Biz Marquis had like a, a tough life. Ch a tough childhood, I'll say, a tough childhood. He was born in Harlem and he lived there for like the first 10 years of his life, an apartment. Then his parents were doing well and they moved to a house on Long Island. But then his mother passed away unexpectedly. His father was just not able to provide. They ended up losing the house that they had bought. He lived under a bridge in Long Island. And they were very, very poor. Like so poor that he and his sibling would share clothes. The documentary is told from the perspective of those that loved him most. It's told through stories that are given to us by his wife. He actually ended up going into the foster care system because his dad was not able to care for him anymore. His foster brother, his foster sister, and so many different artists and actors. Tracy Morgan was a really close friend of his. Dapper Dan owned a clothing store in Harlem, was a big friend of his. Rakim, Nick Cannon, Shantae. So many people had so many stories about him. What a wonderful person he was. And his consistency in his love for hip hop. This is perfect. It's hot, you see this theme? Last week I did salads, this week I'm all about soups. He was a different kind of rapper. I think he's known as a beatboxer, but also a rapper. He was fun. He brought the joy. He wasn't shooting them up, banging them up. He wasn't doing that. He was having fun. And his manager was also telling stories about him. When he first had the song, um, you say he's just a friend. No one liked it. His manager didn't like it. His No one liked it. And it ended up being this huge hit for him. He was on MTV and everything. But I did not know he was diabetic. And he struggled with high blood pressure. I also didn't know that he was on Celebrity Fit Club, a TV show on TV. He actually won. When he got on the show, I think he was almost 350 pounds, 349, I think they said. And he lost 40 pounds on the show. They don't give the specific cause of his death. He passed away when he was 57 years old. He was in the hospital for a full year. He went to the hospital during the height of the lockdown in 2020. And initially, even his wife couldn't visit him. No friends could come see him. They said that he had a series of strokes, but then also his diabetes was a huge factor in the hospital for a year. And he passed away at 57 years old. He passed away in 2021, so two years ago. He seemed like such a good person. Collector, so he had he was a sneakerhead. He had all the old toys. He had, I mean, anything you can think of, jewelry, he collected. Like he has a huge room and his wife just kind of walks the viewers through this room and kind of just goes into all these different things that he collected. Like she calls him a big kid, like, collected things that he wanted as a child, but could not have. Please see it. I just learned, I feel like I learned so much from documentaries. I mean, he was a true talent. What he was able to do with his mouth. I'll try to find, I'll try to find a little clip here somewhere. Bismarcky, the human on The forefront of hip hop in terms of sampling. He was really a creative genius. He really was. I was really inspired by that, how hard he worked. He used to go to these battles, rap battles and beatboxing battles. He would literally beatbox so hard and so long 
that when he left, his lips were swollen. And he would literally have to submerge them in an ice bath, a huge bowl of ice water to help the swelling go down and help with the pain. He's also very down to earth. A close friend of his was Fat Joe. He used to work the cash register at Fat Joe's clothing store and sell mixtapes. Fun, lovable guy. Showtime is a network. It's a brand new documentary and it's really worth a watch. I do like a little ducky sauce. That shrimp. This is really good. Today is Wednesday, September 27th. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.